Masters, mistresses, the doctor requires materials in order to maintain the TARDIS and ensure continued functionality. He similarly requires carbon-based comestibles to sustain his own biological functions and existence. Master would never say this, but he requires aid beyond that supplied by this unit in order to acquire these. To aid the doctor in his various tasks and creations, this can be most effectively achieved via Patreon or Substack subscriptions, or through donations directly to PayPal, or if you desire physical goods in return for your contributions, written accounts of my travels with the Doctor are also available on Amazon. Links are in the description below. Thank you, Masters, Mistresses. the road, you Scott scum! <laughs> and get the kilt off the boy! The law of King George forbids it! If we catch you again, we'll hang the both of you, along with the rest of them! Boys, match! It is Scotland in the year 1751 six years after Bonnie Prince Charlie has fled to France. It was a time of great hardship for the people of Scotland. King George II sits on the throne after brutally putting down the Jacobite rebellion. In the Highlands, there is still much support for Bonnie Prince Charlie and the hills abound with the hated English redcoats. This was the year then of the death of Alexander Balfour, leaving his only son, David, an orphan. Now, Reverend Campbell, David's good friend, advises him to seek his ancestral home, the House of Shores. He gives him a letter written in his father's hand, addressed to a certain Ebenezer Balfour. Who knows, Davy? This Mr. Ebenezer Balfour may be a distant relative, a kind man who'll take care of you. I ne'er heard your father speak of him, but I do know the House of Shores is a noble house with a fine and proud history. You'll be safe there, I'm sure. Now away with you and a safe journey, Davy. <laughs> with a letter for Mr. Ebenezer Balfour. Leave it on the step and be off with you quick. I'll do no such thing until I deliver it to the hands of Mr. Ebenezer Balfour himself. It is a letter of introduction. What's your name then? My name is David Balfour. Balfour, did you see? Aye, Balfour, the son of the late Alexander Balfour. Ah, oh, then he's dead at last. Ah, then you'd best come in. It's dark, cheaper than the cost of candles, Davy. Come.
No. Give me the letter. No. I must give it to Ebenezer Balfour himself. Ah, D.B. I am Ebenezer Balfour. I'm your father's older brother. And D.B. That makes me your uncle. You? My uncle? Aye, laddie. Now, hand me the letter. You. Your father has asked me to look after you. Uh, it was a promise I made to him many years ago. A man of my word. You'll be safe here, Davy, with me. And I've got something for you. Wait here. And touch nothing while I'm gone, do you understand? Nothing. To my little brother Ebenezer on his fifth birthday with love, Alexander. Hmm. There, Davy. That's the inheritance I promised your father I'll give you. Forty pounds. Now, Davy. I want you to go to the tower at the far end of the house. There's a chest with papers of your father's and mine. Fetch it to me, if you will. taken mine, Uncle Ebenezer. You sent me out to die, didn't you? No, Davy. You're wrong. You're wrong. But I'm too sick to explain it to you now. Too sick, laddie. I, I'll tell you all in the morning, I swear. And the money you stole from me? I, that too, Davy. That too. Help me to bed, laddie. There you are, Uncle. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Uncle Ebenezer, why would you want me dead? Well, Davy. The door, man. There's someone at the door. Phew. Uncle, this is a... What name do you have? Oh, my name's Ransom, sir. 
cabin boy for Captain Hosey Easy of the Good Ship Covenant. He's bought a letter for you. Ah, Davy, we must be away at this very moment. Have a business venture with Captain Ho Season, who waits for me aboard his ship at Queen's Ferry. I need speak with him urgently about our affairs. I, uh, well, I'll stand to lose a great deal of money, do you understand, Davy? <laughs> season. I'll be back in due course. Now, lad, take me to the covenant, quick and lively. Good day to you, young man. You're new to these parts. Aye, I've come with my uncle, Ebenezer Balfour. Ebenezer Balfour, did you say? Yes, sir. Well, laddie, it's no my business, but Mr. Balfour is a most unpopular man in these parts. I must tell you, uncle or no uncle. Aye, that he is. They say that he murdered his older brother Alexander so that he could inherit the house of Shaw's. Then you must be... Oh, laddie, what have I said? Take no notice, lad. The man's affected by drink. My father died peacefully just a short time ago, sir. And that I do know because he raised me. There was no murder. But this gentleman said my father was the elder brother. Aye, of that there's no doubt. By some five years he was. Mr. David, sir, Mr. David, your uncle and Captain Hosey have sent to fetch you aboard the Covenant. They have urgent business with you. Take great care, laddie, great care. When you've finished your business aboard the Covenant, go to Mr. Rankeela, the lawyer. You can trust him. He's a good man. Come, Mr. David, come. If I don't fetch you this very instant, the first mate, Mr. Shewan, will beat me again. Bring him aboard, Mr. Shewan. Captain all season. You know what to do with young Balfour. Make no mistake. So you finally decided to present us with your company, eh, young Balfour? Only for as long as it takes you and my uncle to spell out your business, Captain. And then I'll take my leave. And where might my uncle be? <laughs> Davy, enjoy your trip. <laughs> ah, the house of Shaw's is mine. All mine. <laughs> Take him below, Mr. Shawan, and tie him tight. Then prepare the ship. We sail at dawn. Mr. David! Mr. David! Wake up! Uh, uh, Ransom! Where am I? You're aboard the Covenant, Mr. David, and we're bound for America. This is my friend, Mr. Rake. Aye, David. They intend to make you a slave when we reach Carolina. Your uncle Ebenezer has arranged it with Shuin and Captain Hoseason. A slave? Aye, lad. But speak quiet, lest they hear you. Where's that lazy idiot? Oh, it's Shuin. I'm filled with him. He and Captain Hosey has been drinking since they left port. Ransom, you half wit loon. Bring me more whiskey. Go, lad. Quick, smart, lest he kills you. Aye, it's a mean ship you're on, and mean people who've kidnapped you, David. 
That Chewin and the captain are both drunkards from daylight till dark and more. It's a wonder the ship sails at all. We are you lazy wretch. You need a lamb, do ya? Murdered the boy. Ah, I've murdered him, and what loss is it? I might be guilty of many things, Shuan, but murder, never. I'll just throw him over the side. No one need ever know. Silence, Shuan. You're a common murderer, and I'll see you hanged upon our return to Scotland, I swear. Murderer? Murderer? Aye, Mr. Yak, a murderer. What's done is done, and we'll not bring him back. Take the lad and prepare to bury him at sea. And as far as any of the crew is concerned, the lad fell overboard. That'll do until the voyage is complete. I'd hang you myself, but the truth is you're a good seaman. And I need you to complete the voyage. And when you're finished, untie young Balfour. He can serve in the roundhouse until we reach America. Are there any other survivors? Not one. You're a lucky man. I, I am a lucky man. Alfur, take the gentleman to the roundhouse and open a fine bottle for him. I'll make you a free man in exchange for his money. Now, oh, the Perry. Rouse the men and we'll storm the roundhouse and relieve him of his burden. <laughs> but, Captain, you said there's to be no more murder aboard the ship. Hush, man. This is not murder. The man's a Jacobite and a loyal subject to Prince Charlie. No, man, it's not murder. It's our royal duty to King George, don't you see? Psst! They plan to murder you, sir. I'm loyal as the day to King George, but I'll no have another murder on this ship. Well, murder is it? Ha! We'll just have to see whose murder it is then. Where are the ship's guns, lad? They're all here, sir. Good, good. Then we can use them. Quick, load as many as you can. I'll watch the door and you watch the skylight. Now, lad, if we're to die together, it's best we knew who we were. What's your name? It's David, sir. David Balfour. Aye, David. There's no need to call me, sir. My name is Alan Breck. For the rest of your life, however long that might be, you shall call me Alan. Captain, young Balfour's not returned from the roundhouse. Aye, I don't like the sound of that. Balfour! Oh, young Balfour's another traitor, too. 
Great men, charge! Ah! Ha! Talon, here they come. Man the guns, young Balfour. And if any come through the skylight, feel free to send them to the devil himself. be back soon enough, I'm certain. Aye, you're right. You'd best reload the pistols afore they do. But, David, if something should happen when next they come, I'm bound to say ye fought like a lion, and that from this moment you shall be known as a friend of Alan Brex. And I want you to take this button. It'll keep you safe wherever you go. Mr. David, a word with you. I mean you no harm. Let him in, Alan. He's a friend. I said no, Alan. Mr. Riach, do you bring a message from Captain Hoseason? Aye, I do. The captain wants to speak with you both. He'd like a truce. Ha! A truce now? How do we know we can trust them? The truth is, Mr. David, that most of us would be glad to have the captain out of the way. We'll not fight any of us no more. Very well, Mr. Riach. Tell Captain Hoseason to come to the small window there, and we'll talk. Uh, and there's no reason for the gun, I'm a man of my word. Ha! Your words, Captain, is that of a kidnapper. Now say what you have to and be quick about it. You're a hard man, whatever your name is. For your information, Captain, my name is Stuart. But they call me Alan Breck. Alan Breck? The same. At your service, sir. There, Mr. Breck. The fact is that I have to turn the ship back. I've no got enough men to sail her, thanks to you and Balfour. In that case, you can sail back along the coast and drop us near my own country. Me, man. I'd rather hang at the end of a rope than risk the ship along that coast. The breakers would tear us to pieces. Well, Captain Hoseason, you can either hang then, or let me blow your brains out this instant. But if it helps you, have a fair knowledge of the waters, and with God's grace we should arrive safely. I think he speaks fairly, Captain Hoseason. I suggest you take his advice. Ah, very well, Brech, have it your way. But I warn you both, if I lose the covenant, I'll not rest until I see you both at the end of a rope.
the one of them sealers shipwrecked from the Covenant. Did you see another from the Covenant? That must mean they're alive. Did you see a man with a fine coat with silver buttons? I did. But what's it to you? He gave me something. Look there, in the pocket. So you're the lad with the silver button. Ah, Alan Breck has spoken well of you, David. You're with friends. I'll have you know. Then you've spoken with Alan. Aye, we have this very night just gone. He went before dawn, lest the redcoats find him here. There's a price on his head, did you know? This is the land of Colin Roy Campbell of Glenure. The man they call the Red Fox. The Red Fox? Aye. Alan Breck's sworn mortal enemy. And loyal to King George, too. No, no. We can talk later. Take some broth and rest now. Alan said to take the road to Torrissey. But mind, the countryside is full of thieves and men with murder in their hearts. You've both been very kind. I'll never forget. Hush, Davy, and go quick. It was nothing for a friend of Alan Breck's. Godspeed now. Your answer swift and true, for it is Colin Roy Campbell of Glenur you speak to. The Red Fox? Aye, the Red Fox himself. Now speak your purpose and quick. Perhaps he's a spy for Prince Charles. Take care, sir. I am a loyal subject of King George. I owe no man and I fear no man. I go to Appen to find a friend. In your name? I came all this way in search of you. But now... But now what, David? I'll give it to you straight, Alan. You've just murdered a man in cold blood. Friend or no friend, I cannot abide with it. I'll say goodbye to you. Now listen, Mr. David Balfour. I've only ever killed a man face to face in a fight fair and square. Trust me, Davy. It was not me who killed the Red Fox. Alan, I owe you an apology. Will you forgive me? Man, man, there's no need for that. It's me who should apologize for the pickle I put you in. David, you're a fine, fine man. And it's my honor to be your friend. I'd die for you, David, I swear. But later, not now. Come on, David, we must fly. There's a price on both our heads. <laughs> Safe enough for a moment. We'll rest and take a bite to eat. I must find my way back to Queensferry. There is a lawyer there I must see, a, a Mr. Rankeeler. David, I'll see you safe to Queensferry. Mark my words. But for now, you must stay with me. You're a wanted man, and if they catch you, you'll hang, make no mistake.
Survive that fall, sir. They'll be dead. Maybe. But Brick's a slippery customer. Go down and fix their bodies when they surface. It's all right, David. He's a friend. Take us to Chief Clooney. But Clooney's in France. No, man. He's hiding up there. They call it Clooney's Nest. Come on. Ah, we meet again, Alan Bray. Welcome to Clooney's Nest. Or Clooney's Cage. Take your pick. <laughs> I'm proud to see you, Chief Clooney. May I present my friend? The Laird of Shores, Mr. David Balfour. Well, welcome to the both of you. Now you'll join me at my table, where we can savour a wee drama too, huh? To your health, the pair of you. My word, Alan, it's good to see you again. And now a drink to Bonnie Prince Charlie. David, what's the matter? You look pale. Aye, I think I've picked up some kind of fever from out in the heather. Ah, then bid you welcome to lie on my bed near the fire and sleep. While Mr. Breck and I pass the time with a game of cards. What say you, Alan? You're a brave man, Clooney. But I never knew you as a stupid one. Until now, that is. Man, there's nothing I'd love more than to take money from you. Clooney, the pleasure is entirely mine, man. Play another hand. Oh, David. enough to travel, I think. Then we must leave soon. Aye, before you lose all your money, Alan Brick. Aye. <laughs> oh, David, it's good to see you up and about. Do they bring word from the south? Aye, my men tell me it's clear of redcoats for the time being. Then I think it's time we took our leave. Clooney, you're a good friend, and we thank you for your help. Well, perhaps this would help you also. But you won this from me fair and square. Oh, man, I wouldn't keep a penny of it. It's yours. I've never let one man, even King George himself, 
leave my home without the money he came with. Ah, Clooney, you're a fine friend. Goodbye, Chief Clooney, and thank you again. Farewell to you both. Take care. Redcoats will still be looking for you. Well, David, this is almost the end of our journey. You'll be safe once we cross that stretch of water. Queensferry lies just beyond the hills. Alan, look! All right, you lot, look sharp now. We have reports of them heading this way. If they make it across the water, we'll have lost them. And if that happens, I'll have you. All right now, look sharp. By the right, big much. I'm afraid we'll have to take the long way, David. And we'll have to try and find a boat and travel across tonight. Alan, I'll have no part in stealing a poor fisherman's boat. Ah, David, you're too good for your own good sometimes. But I'll steal nothing, I promise. Come, we'll make for the town. I think this is far enough. We'll lie here until dark. Come on, Davy. Follow me. Now do as I say, man. Look as sick as you can. For heaven's sake, why? You'll see. Now just do as I say. There, there, man. Just sit quietly and you'll feel better. Do you have a glass of water for my poor young friend here? What's the matter with him? Is he ill? Aye. He's sicker than a dog. And no wonder, considering what's happened to him. Does he have a fever? Worse, lass. Worse. I think he's not long for this world. More's the pity. And him being a gentleman, too. A gentleman? Aye. And he's had to walk hundreds of miles and sleep in the heather among robbers and murderers. Oh, the poor lamb. And now, if I could just get him across the water to Queensferry, I can take him to his home to die in a decent bed. Are the redcoats looking for him? Aye. Come in the countryside for him. Father! Can I have the boat to take them to Queensferry? Oh, I don't like it, lassie. They could be spies for King George. Alan, have you no shame? Hush, Davy. I think she's in love with you. Alan! I promised you a boat, but I didn't promise I wouldn't tell a few white lies. Now, quiet. Here she comes. How do I know I can trust you? Do you know the lawyer Ranquila in Queensferry? Aye, I do. Then it's his door I'm bound to. Then I'll help you. But near the shore of the lock at midnight and wait. There's no sign, Alan, and I'm not surprised either. After what you did, you should hang for that. Oh, David, you should not take it so badly. Why, you could come back and see her one day. You know, explain to her. Psst, what's that? It's a boat. And the girl, David. No, there. Under the nets of area, quick. Who's there in the boat? It's I, Betty Crawshaw, bringing in the nets for my sick father. Funny time of night to be fishing. Check the boat, men. Uh, there's nothing here, Captain. It's just as well for you, ma'am. There are two desperate men loose in the town tonight. Be careful. Aye, I'll be careful. And if I catch any dangerous fish, I bring them to you. Fish now, are we? Serves us right, too. 
story about your sick friend back there, then you better think again. Sick, my foot. You're right. May I introduce myself? My name is David Balfour, and this is my friend... Alan Brick. Aye. You knew all along. The moment you walked in. Your posters are on every tree. I'm in your debt, Betty Crawshaw. Aye, and me too. I bid you both good night and good luck. Will you come back, David Balfour? Aye, Betty. I will. I'll wait here for you, David. Come back tomorrow when you've found Rankila. Aye, Alan. He's a fair man. All my problems will be solved. The House of Shaws will become rightfully mine. So it's another night in the heather for you. Ah, yes, Davy. Punishment for my many sins. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, my friend. Good night, David. Sorry to bother you at this late hour, but my name is David Balfour, and I've come a long way to see you. David Balfour? My word, come in, lad. Thank you, sir. I would have gone to an inn, but I have no money to pay. Lad, lad, no. Say nothing more. First you must eat, and then you must sleep. I and take a long bath, too. We'll talk in the morning. Aye, we'll talk in the morning. Oh... Thank you, Mr. Ankeeler. Don't thank me, David. The innkeeper at Hawes Inn told of you. I've been hoping you'd come. There's important news for you. News? Aye. The price on your head. It's been lifted. They've arrested the real murderer. You're a free man. This must be my lucky day. Aye, David. Your lucky day. <laughs> Not before I give you a message of some importance, you won't. I bring news of your nephew, David Balfour. Eh? David Balfour, did you say? Aye. What message do you have, then? Man, you'll have to come down and open the door for me to tell you, face to face. What's your name, then? My friends call me Alan Breck. Alan Breck, the outlaw. Aye, the same. And if you don't come down this instant, me and my friends will make sure you don't have a house to live in before the week is out. Aye, Mr. Breck. Your nephew is our prisoner. He was shipwrecked off the Isle of Mull, and we found him on the beach. Me and my men are in need of money, urgent. Now, Mr. Balfour, it's a fair exchange. Your money for his life. Thought about it. You'll just have to take his life. Good night to you now. Oh, come, Mr. Balfour. You can do better than that. What if we were to return him here to the House of Shaws? Oh, no, no, you, you'd best keep him where he is. It'll cost you more. I'll, I'll pay, I'll pay. Name your price, Mr. Breck. That's much better. Now, how much did you pay Captain Horseason to take the lad away? That's a lie. A dirty black lie. I'd never do such a thing. How much, Mr. Balfour? Uh, ten pounds. I was only ten pounds. Thank you, Mr. Breck. We've heard enough. Aye, Uncle Ebenezer. We've heard enough. Oh, Davy, Davy. I meant you no harm, I swear. I can't believe it, Uncle. After all I've been through. Oh, Davy, can you ever forgive me? In time, perhaps I can. You are my own blood, after all. And blood's thicker than water. 
You should be ashamed of yourself, Ebenezer Balfour. Oh, I am. I am mortally ashamed. On your feet, man, and stop your sniveling. And if you don't mind, we'll go to my office, where there are some important papers for you to sign. And then you'll take your medicine in court on charges of kidnapping and attempted murder. Come. So, you're home where you belong, eh, David? The Lair of Shaws. It's a fine title. Aye, Alan, and it's no small thanks to you. Me? What about a certain young lady who helped you too? <laughs> Davy, I've got a surprise for you. But we must go back to Queensferry quickly. Come on, man. There it is. My boat. My boat. I'll be in France within the week, David. Betty, I promised you a surprise, David. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> Alan Brech, you said you'd be here by yourself. No matter, Betty. Now that you're here, will you stay? Yes, David Balfour, I will. You can take the boat back yourself, Mr. Alan Brech. Aye, I will. So, it's goodbye to you, David. I'll not forget you. Never. Nor will I forget you, Alan Breck. You're a prince among men. And you, Betty, you'll make a fine wife for the new Laird of Shores. You're a lucky man, David. Goodbye. Farewell, Alan.